Welcome back once again out there to all my fellow Fix employees to another episode of How to Satisfactory. And today's episode is going to be a bit of a doozy, a bit of a big one today. We are finally, 25 episodes in, going to start on oil production. That's right, big huge milestone today. So for this, I just want to add that if you are tuning in to this episode to learn how to do oil, to learn how to make a starter oil production, then this episode I'm going to try to tailor specifically to everyone. So even if you've not followed along with the other episodes, you just want to learn how to do oil production, this video should work for you as well. As long as you're at this same exact point that we are right now, which you should be if you're interested in learning how to do oil, so you should have the capabilities where you're making motors, encased steel frames, all the other stuff. Um, maybe you've already unlocked oil processing, and you know, essentially as long as you're at this point, you should be able to follow along with us. This first little bit may not be for you, but once we get to where we're going to be making our oil production, then at that point you can kind of follow along. Uh, I'm going to try to put in like chapters in the video so you guys can just kind of go ahead and skip to that point. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and get started for everybody else who has been watching and all of you out there, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is head up to our hub up here. And we are going to go over here to our terminal and we're going to unlock oil processing. Now the oil processing is located under tier five. I've already got it selected as my current milestone. If you don't, go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going back over here to our active milestone and we are going to need 50 motors, 100 encased industrial beams, 500 steel pipes and 500 copper sheets. All right, so it looks like I've got all of my steel pipes already in there. I've got a few things of copper sheeting on me I'll throw in there real quick but we need to gather up our motors and our industrial beams and some more copper sheeting all right so not a problem in the last couple episodes we got those into production and being made so we should have some of those at this point let's go down here to our storage facility and let's take a look at our storage facility real quick so I had a question in an earlier video about where the motors we were making were supposed to go um, I thought I explained it somewhere in the video but we'll go back over that again real quick this is just for uh for you who they're asking so the motors should be going into this container on top right here previously we had versatile frameworks in there i think so what you want to do is make sure you clear out all of those industrial frameworks and you want to be sending those straight to the space elevator now when you're clearing those out, you can just go into the container, grab them, and then just take them and, and actually manually put them in the space elevator. You don't want to destroy them, because so, that would be a waste of resources. So just grab them out and just take them by hand up to the space elevator. And you also want to make sure that you have your splitter, your smart splitter, right down there on the edge, set to send motors to the right, and then that should send it up that container. So that's for you out there who were asking about that. Let's go ahead and gather some motors real quick. Da, 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 da. And let's see, let's get... Yeah, I'm going to grab two stacks, may need them. And we're going to come down here to the very edge down here. Next to our rotors is our encased industrial beams. We'll grab a couple of stacks of those. Because, well, why not, you know? Then we're going to go down here to the bottom to our copper sheeting. And let's see. Oh, it's all the way down here. All right, there it is. And let's grab... You know what? We're going to grab about three stacks of these because we're going to be working with pipes today and we're probably going to need some copper sheets if we're going to be doing that next i'm just going ahead and grab four stacks you, you never know you just never know all right back up to our hub all right well, next we're going to plop our gathered resources into our hub terminal here now you can hold down control and just click what you need and it will send all that stuff in there like so and once again we're going to push that big red button which is something we don't actually get to do that often anymore um, yeah, because most of our, like, milestones are taking a little bit longer to hit at this point. Anyway, we're going to send those resources up to our most blessed, excellent overlords in the sky who has graciously provided us with these bodies and this planet on which we work. Alright, so let's take a look at everything that we just unlocked in this milestone. First of all, we unlocked the oil extractor. This basically works the same as a miner would. We set it down on an oil node, it will then grind and pump the oil up to where we need it that will then send that oil into a refinery refinery is much like a constructor 
that is going to allow us to produce that crude oil we're getting from the oil extractor into products such as plastic and rubber, fuel, and petroleum coke here. So we can make all of that using the oil through the refinery. Next up is a valve. I'll be honest, not really mess with a valve too much. It's an important piece. It is useful. I've just not personally really messed with it much. Um, it's something we're going to have to probably go over at some point though. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be using it today, though. So, no worries on that right now. Maybe I'll try to go over that later. Uh, and again, we got the plastic, rubber, fuel, and petroleum coke. Petroleum coke and fuel, well, petroleum coke anyway, can be a byproduct. So, one thing about when you're making plastic and rubber, when you're producing it from crude oil, you get a byproduct, which is different than when, say, we're making something on a constructor. When we're making something on a constructor, you just make it, you get the one output, that's which is the product we're making. Um, with oil and the refinery, when you make plastic or rubber, you get a heavy oil residue, which is a byproduct of being able to make these products. And then you have to turn that heavy oil residue into something else so yeah it, you can turn that into fuel that also works or petroleum and coke uh so we'll we'll get to that i know maybe that might be a little confusing right now but don't worry we'll go over it uh we can now also make circuit boards using plastic and i forgot what else makes that uh, i'm pretty sure it's like the uh not the copper wire but the quick wire yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so you make that from, I think, some quick wire, some other stuff. Anyway, um, we also can now scan for crude oil. And we have unlocked some new shop products. So that's everything that we've gotten from this milestone. All right, so now that we have oil unlocked, and we've talked a little bit about what we unlocked, the next thing is going to be going out there and actually making this factory. But before we do so, this is going to be a bit of a long trip. We probably don't want to run all the way out there and then get out there and not have the equipment and products that we need. So we're going to make a list real quick. So let's go ahead and hit Q. We're going to open up our menu here and I will tell you exactly what we're going to need here. Well, not exactly, but pretty close to exactly. So first of all, let's go into production. Now, here is the refinery right here. So we're going to need one of those, but let's find the oil extractor right here. So oil extractor, we are going to need at least one oil extractor. So go ahead and hit that plus sign right there next to that to add that to our to-do list over here on the right-hand side. All right, so now we've got that. Uh, we're going to need, let's see, about six refineries. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You can also just type in the number you need right here as well. And then that will add that over there. So we got those. We're going to need six coal generators. Now you're probably thinking coal generators. Why do we need those? Well, just add them to the list. We'll explain it. All right, so six coal generators added to our list there. And we are also going to need probably a sink just in case. So let's go up here to special and there's the sink. We'll go ahead and add that. Now, what's not on this list is a few other things. We're going to need lots of concrete and normal things so that we can make foundations and such. We are probably going to need some steel beams as well. And we're going to need lots of copper sheeting to make pipes. I gathered that up earlier. So I've kind of repositioned myself here where you can kind of see our list, our to-do list over here on the right-hand side. So we can just go over this, make sure we got everything. We are going to need one oil extractor, six refineries, six co-generators, and an awesome sink. Uh, what makes it awesome? I, I, I don't know. It's pretty cool to watch sometimes, but anyway, uh, all right, so here's what we're going to need. 75 motors. We're going to need 270 cables, 80 encased industrial beams, 180 steel pipes, 120 copper sheets, 135 reinforced iron plates. And we can scroll down right here, which, by the way, you can scroll down if you've got a menu up right here. You can just use your mouse over here and then just use your scroll wheel and scroll up and down. Yeah, just handy little tip there. Uh, let's see, 60 rotors and 45 concrete. I think we're gonna need a lot more concrete than what it says here, but not for these machines, but yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and grab all of this stuff. We're gonna need, me personally, looks like we're gonna need some more cable and some more motors. So let's go ahead and grab those. All right, so one more stack of motors will probably do for that. I'm just gonna sort my stuff out here a little bit. And let's see, we're gonna need some wire. Oh, look, wire. I call it wire, but I actually mean cable. 
yeah, that, that's totally what I mean. Let's go ahead and grab a couple stacks of that. And let's see, I think that's all I'm going to personally need. Let me take a look at my inventory here real quick and just make sure. Uh, how much concrete do we have? Uh, yeah, I might need some more steel beams. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably going to need some more steel beams. Let's grab some of those. Mm, where is that? Right here. All right, I'll grab a couple of stacks of that. And yeah, all right. Now, let's go down to our shop because we're going to buy a couple things out of our shop. I'll just go ahead and take the easy way down here and jump and right over here to our awesome shop, which is where our awesome sink makes awesome coupons to put in our awesome shop. All right, we're going to go over here to, uh, I believe it's architecture. Yeah. Yeah. The structural frame set. We want to go ahead and grab this right here. This is going to be very, very handy to have. It's going to cost 10 tickets, but at this point, tickets should not be something that you are running out of. So we'll go ahead and grab that and buy. Now you may be asking, why are we buying this? Well, this is just going to make things a lot prettier. You don't need this, but for my idea of what we're going to do, these are just going to make things look a little nicer. So, yeah, you can do this now. You can do it later and just change out, like, foundations over to this. Whatever you want to do. I'm just going to go ahead and grab it now. All right, so there's one more thing before we head out that I almost forgot about. Again, just like the things we got from the shop, this isn't a requirement, but it is going to make your life easy. And that is going to be a power switch. If you haven't already unlocked that, come up here to the ma'am. I know we haven't been to the MAM in a little bit, but we're going to go to Caterium. And at this point, you should already have it down there because we had to unlock the AI limiters. So one of the next things on the list here is a power switch. We're going to need 100 steel beams. And we're going to need 50 AI limiters. AI limiters can be made using Caterium wire or the quick wire and I believe uh, copper sheeting. Um, can be made on the bench. I've already made myself a bunch of this. Um, I've got like 60 on me right now at the moment because I always like to have AI limiters on me. You never know when I'm going to need a smart splitter or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and start the research of the power switch. Should only take about three seconds. One, two, and three. There we go. Done. Now the power switch is going to be very, very handy because what it allows is us, once we get our power over there, once we start getting all of our machines and stuff built and ready to be put power to it, if we start to run out of power, this is going to allow us to cut, like basically cut off the power right there at that point and not have to worry about it. We can just turn it back on so we get power to the rest of our facility instead of over there. And it lets us do some work. So yeah, it's just really, really handy. It's going to keep us from having to travel all the way back over here to the base to fix stuff. So yeah, just a, just a little handy thing. In order to make it, you're going to need about 20 quick wire uh four steel beams and one ai limiter so make sure you have that as well in fact we'll just go ahead and add that to the list there we go all right so real quick guys i just want to make sure that this is clear i cannot stress this enough make sure you have enough parts to take with you to build things that's just not even on this specific list over here, but also for extra stuff. Now I'm talking about concrete for foundations, uh, the rods, the iron plates, all of those. You're going to need quite a bit of those. Like, seriously, I would take like several stacks of each if you've got the inventory for it. I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got like seven stacks of concrete. I've got about five stacks here of iron plates and about five stacks of iron rods. Those are going to be what you're going to be building with a lot over there. Uh, also, the steel beams, um, maybe not so much uh, the steel pipes and stuff, maybe reinforced iron plates. But yeah, seriously, like the three major things, concrete, iron rods, iron plates. Trust me, you're going to need them. All right, so just one more thing, guys, before we head away from our main factory here. We are going to be going on a bit of a journey. We're going to be traveling up the west side of the map along the coast to get to the oil that is on that side. It's one of the best places on the map for oil, in my humble opinion. And uh, since we're going to be going on a said journey, we're going to be doing a lot of traveling. And, you know, things happen when you're out and about. Might run into some of the local inhabitants, and they may not like it that you're uh, you're in their mating area, you know, or whatever. Um, chances are you also might have hostile creatures turned off as well. By the way, that's a thing you can do now. You just go into the settings, and you can actually just turn that off. And the creatures won't attack you unless you attack them first. But, you know... Maybe something happens and you accidentally do 
like smack one on accident. Things happen. You never know. Uh, then they will defend themselves. And then in that case, you have to defend yourself. And, you know, your health might get low. So always make sure you have a way to regain health when you're going on one of these travels. Safety first. Make sure you have medicine or something to eat, some sort of food. Uh, the great thing is now your health will actually regenerate over time when you're not like in combat or anything. So that that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you have something in case you need a good health boost in a pinch. Also, we're going to need some sort of weapon. The handy dandy beat stick is always good in a pinch. Definitely. Uh, I also have, let's see, uh, explosives. Because, you know, I might need to blow away some rocks. Let's see, what else have I got? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, that's my nuts. Didn't mean to show those on screen. Uh, here we go. We have the hand scanner the object scanner this is going to be handy because what we're going to do while we're traveling we're going to be doing a couple of things we're going to be looking for slugs because you know while we're going up that way maybe we might find some maybe we might find car some that's easy to get to we might as well grab them while we're up there right all right so that's a good thing to have uh in order to do this now you may notice on the actual screen right here you see where it says berry on the top of the hand scanner if you right click on your mouse you can switch between different things so we're going to select power slugs uh, mushrooms nuts berries but power slugs is what we want now you guys you can see there we're out of range because there's none anywhere here we probably grabbed them all that's anywhere near here for the moment uh but yeah so we're going to keep this open as we're traveling just in case we come across a stray slug somewhere that needs a new home in one of our machines. All right, so at that point, what we're going to do now is we are going to head out and we're going to go towards our coal generators in the giant lake area. So let's go up to that. All right, so here we are over at our coal power plant, and this is actually where we're going to start our traveling at. And the reason for that is because we're going to connect off of these power cables right here and we're going to run the cable as we go up this way because we do have to get some power to where we're going and it is a bit of a trip so yeah then we're just gonna start from here so we'll first grab this turn this into a mark two there we go that should do it and then we will just connect a line off of that and then we're just gonna run this kind of over this way and we're just gonna keep doing this all the way on our travels now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head west up this way until we get to the shoreline now as you're traveling west you're probably gonna be also going uphill and right about this area you should encounter a few of the uh, local wildlife depending on it whether or not you have hostile activity or hostile creatures turned on uh, but just keep going up the hill and just keep running your line until you know basically just kind of go until you can't really run anymore you don't have to worry about where you place these right away unless you want to uh but you know uh, we can always come back and redo these power lines later um also occasionally stopping just to see if there's any like uh, the power slugs around here which i actually see one right now should be right up on that hill right there yeah so we're gonna go ahead and grab him we're just gonna keep our eye out and see if we can find these as we're going all right once we reach the top of the hill we've grabbed that yellow slug that's right on that cliff edge right here if we turn around there's actually another one a blue one like right over here so let's go ahead and grab him as well there we go all right we got that one now once we do that we want to kind of turn around right here and you should see looking west you're going to see a path that kind of goes up a hill right that way that's the way we're going to take our line so we're going to grab it from down there we're going to run it down up to here and up that way, and then we're going to continue our path that way. So let me go down here. Uh, let's see, connect a power line to there, run it down to here, and then west we go. So when you come across this Mercer Sphere right here, that means you are definitely going in the right direction. So at this point, we're kind of going to go a little bit southwest. We want to go up this path right that way that's going to lead down into a valley and then out to the shore so let's go ahead and run our line that way to i'm going to go there, go to here now if you continue straight west right there you're going to come to a clearing and if you make a left there's a blue power slug up in there as well just an fyi but we're going to go this way right now next you should come across this clearing right here you're going to see most likely three of these spitters and a yellow power slug on top of a little rock right there. So let's go ahead and take these guys out, grab that power slug, and we're gonna continue west until we hit the shoreline. 
All right, so the nasties have been dispatched. We've grabbed the power slug over there. Now we're going to kind of go this direction, kind of south a little bit, kind of southwest right in that way. If you go that way, you're going to come to a cliff. So we want to keep going this direction right here. So we're just going to go down in this way. And you see it kind of goes downhill right here. That's the direction that you want to go. If you come to the sloop right here that's on top of this rock, uh, surrounded by these uh, these hatchers, again, you're in the right place. Now we're just going to go straight west from here. I probably need to get rid of these things, though. And as we head west downhill, you are finally going to come across the shoreline right here. As you can see, all of this water, which runs all the way up and down this side of the map. Right over there, we have a crash site. Uh, we have some toxic area right over there with the gas. And I can even see... A slug a blue one right over there but that is where our oil is going to be and to verify that remember we can now scan for oil so if we hold down V choose crude oil click that and we should see them pop up in just a second as soon as it hits over there yep right there we've got a total of uh, I think it's popping up as three but I'm pretty sure there's at least four different oil nodes over there that we're going to go. Uh, one of them is a pier. We're not going to use the pier today. We're actually going to go to this one over on this side, which is a normal node. All right, so we have our location in sight. The next thing we have to do is just kind of head down the beach shoreline right there until we get close to that rock arch right there. Of course, we're going to be going right past that crash site right there, which is guarded by a hatcher and one of the large spitters. So we're going to first take out the hatcher using our beat stick. And then a well-placed explosive onto that spitter should do most of his health in. Now, one thing most people don't actually know about Satisfactory is it's a little bit like Halo, in which the explosives actually will stick to the enemies. So, just gotta sticky him. And then that takes off most of his health right there. Just gotta get around him and a couple of well-placed strikes. And the quarterback is toast. All right, now we're going to head over here to the crash site. Of course, we're going to pick up what we can. My inventory is quite full at the moment. And the crash site right here is actually a really easy one. You don't need anything in order to open it. You just got to clear out the beasties. And then, bam, pull the lever. And there's your hard drive. Again, my my, uh, my inventory is really crap at the moment. I've, I'm very full up on most things. So not much I can do here at the moment. But that's okay. Hopefully you guys have space for it and you can grab it. But yeah, we'll just kind of continue on down the shoreline. Make sure your health is full. Uh, take care of any other wee beasties that want to uh, lay waste to you. And uh, once we get down there, kind of close to those rocks, we'll go from there. All right, once you get down the shoreline, you're going to come to this point right here where you can see the water on that side, the arch right there, the waterfall. And of course, we've got the, the water right here kind of blocking our path. Well, not really blocking it, but it's in the way. So right here is a perfect place to cross over that island because if we jump and get right about, you know, I think actually you can walk across all of this, but the water's not too deep right here. So no fear of drowning. Don't have to swim. You just run right across right here. It's perfect. And once we get over here, you're going to see some hatchers right there. There's actually going to be two, I think. One there and one here. So we want to take those out, and that's going to be the oil node we'll be working from. All right, so this is a crude oil node. As you can see, it kind of looks like a little bit of a tar pit in a way. All right, so I just kind of wanted to bring up a map real quick just to kind of show you guys where this is that we are going to be building, which is right over here. You can see I've got the crude oil already marked here. So this is where you want to be on the map. It's all the way on the west side of the map, and kind of this shoreline here so when I was talking about the shoreline this is what I'm talking about it runs all the way up this western side of the map um, for those who haven't been following the series and are just wanting to know how to actually build this and are picking up from this point then this is where you want to go for the best oil there's other places on the map that are pretty good for oil but I think this one is actually one of the best spots now for those who have been watching the series essentially to find this from where you are this is where our main base is that we've kind of been building. This is our main factory right here. This is where the river or uh, the lake is that we have our co-generators right here. So we set out from here and kind of went up this way and then kind of went around this way and down the shoreline down this way and kind of come out right about here. So and then as you can see, it's just right over there. So yeah, there you go. There he is on the map. Easy for you guys to see. 
All right, so now is where we're actually going to start construction at. So if you've not been watching any of the series and you're just tuning in to learn how to do your starter oil factory the best way, uh, well, this is where you would be tuning in at. So welcome to all those who are new. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is open up our build menu. We're going to go in here to production. We're going to find the oil extractor right there. We're going to drop it down onto the oil node. And I want to face it kind of that direction. Actually kind of works. Maybe a little more there. I want to have it out into the actual ocean part and kind of try my best to get it lined up with the shoreline. I think this kind of works. So we'll start there. And now with our oil extractor down, what we're going to do is I'm going to jump on top of this and I'm going to grab uh, a, let's see here, I want to do a foundation. Let me grab a one meter foundation here to put it on the ground. And I'm going to try to line this up here with our line so it's right in the middle. That looks pretty good right there. So we'll start there. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoop this. Let me make sure zoop's on. We're going to zoop this about 16 to 17 squares out. So right there, that's about, we'll say 11. So I'll go out here to the end of this and we'll go about six more from here. So one, two, three, four. Oh, that's a little too far. Uh, I'm, I'm doing seven. So I guess that'd be about 18 squares. I think that'd be fine. So we're gonna do about 18 squares out. Again, as long as you're just like 16, 17, 18, anything like that out through here, you just want to kind of get it out into the water a little bit and that will work. Once we have this platform kind of coming out through here, the next thing we're going to do is copy this, but I want to do about five in each direction. So we'll go about, uh, let's see, five that way and about five this way. There we go. And now that we have that, we're going to go to each end. And we're going to use those, let's see, under architecture, it is the, where you at? Ah, it's right up here at the top. All right, so we want to use the frame foundations right here. And we're going to go about, I need to make sure that's vertical. So I'm gonna go about three of these up, just like that on each side. So I'm gonna do this down on that side too. So I'll copy that, head down here to the end and place these down here too. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna take a one meter foundation. I'm gonna put it on top of that. And we're gonna zoop, let me get zoop on. And we're gonna zoop that over to the other one over here. And make sure that it's on top of that, like that. There we go. Now we need to be able to get to the top of this, so I'm going to bring a ladder down so we can climb up on top of that and then climb up. And once we're at the top here, we're going to continue this. Now what I want to do is I want to do about 10 that way and about 10 this way. There we go. And come out here to the end and we're going to connect these two. So starting from here on this end, connect that over to that one, which should be about, uh, I think that should be about nine. Okay, that'll work. And then we're just gonna fill in this giant gap right here. So we're just gonna make a huge floor all the way down. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we fill out this entire platform right here. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to grab one of these, I'm going to make it into a four meter foundation right there. And then we are going to put another one meter on top of that. And we're going to make another platform on top of this. So what this is that we're standing on right now is going to be our logistics platform. And then just kind of do the same thing again. We're just going to make this an 11 by 11 foundation. Now, before you finish filling in all of this platform on the top layer, make sure you are on top of it. So just jump to the top of here. And we want to leave this spot right here kind of free. This way we have a way to get up and down when with our ladder right there. So now we've got all of this. So the next part is going to be our refineries up here. All right, so now we have two platforms. We've got the bottom and the top. The bottom platform in between these two is gonna be our logistics layer. This is gonna be pipes and conveyor belts and stuff we're gonna be running down there. This top platform is gonna be where our main machines are, our refineries and our co-generators, et cetera. Uh, but before we move on to building those, we're gonna expand this platform out one. So we're gonna go all the way down to, let's go to there. 
and bring this out and just kind of expand it out right there and one more right there okay there we go now this is the middle of the platform right here so we're going to come over to one more square right here we're going to go into our production i'm going to grab our refinery i'm going to go over here and we're going to place down our first refinery with our inputs facing towards us because we're going to have the oil coming up and going in on this side we're going to center it right on that square i'm going to bring it back one and two spots i went a little too far right there so that should do it right there now going to go into logistics we're going to grab a pipeline floor hoe we're going to put it right in the middle of this platform right here so that lines up with our hoe in our refinery right there our input that looks good let's grab some pipes and we're going to hook it up to that and straight into that there we go now we have a pipe that comes up and straight into our refinery right there now we're going to do this three on this side and three on the other side so we'll build our next one right here i want to come over to let's move to the middle right here so in between these two uh is that where we want that yeah i want to go right in between so we'll come uh, right here line these up right there and another one right here specifically on this platform so not in between but right in the middle right there that works and then we're going to go ahead grab that floor hole put each of these right in the middle so right there and let's see right is that lined up no it is now though that should work right there and then put our pipes in so one and two now we're going to repeat this on the other side we're going to put three more refineries and our pipe holes and everything down here on this side all right, so now you should have three of these on each side. You should have three refineries on this side, three refineries on this side, connected with pipes, doing the input. So we haven't run the oil up here yet, but it's gonna come under here, here, go up into these pipes and into these machines. Now, two on one side are gonna be making plastic, two on the other side are gonna be making rubber. Let's take a look at that real quick. I'm gonna come down here to this one. Let's click E and go in here. So we're gonna choose the first one right here, which is plastic. Now, by choosing this recipe, you'll see that we actually are having two different products being made. You'll see we have 20 plastic per minute and 10 per minute of heavy oil residue. So the crude oil is gonna be turned into both of these. So this is what is called a byproduct. By making the plastic, we have another product being made that we have to figure out what to do with, which is this heavy oil residue. Luckily, what we're gonna do is we are going to route the heavy oil residue into the third refinery on each side which is then going to turn that into something called petroleum coke. So let's go in here. Let's choose petroleum coke. All right, so you'll see the heavy oil residue is then going to be made into 120 petroleum coke per minute. That petroleum coke can be burned as fuel, just like coal. It's basically a really not great version of coal, but it will provide electricity, which we can kind of make this whole area right here self-sufficient once we get it up and going. If we come down here to this side, this side we're gonna go in, we're gonna choose the first rubber right here, the one with the heavy oil residue on it. So then we'll make 20 rubber per minute with 20 heavy oil residue being made. So we gotta figure out what to do with all that heavy oil residue. And again, it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna come down here. It's gonna be making petroleum coke. All right, so we'll go over here and we'll choose this and we'll say make this into rubber as well. So rubber, rubber, petroleum coke, Plastic, plastic, petroleum coke. All right. All right, next we're going to connect up our pipes. So I'm going to not do anything with this one just yet. Our last one down here. Because again, that's going to be for petroleum coke. But we want the crude oil coming up and going into these. So I'm going to come down here to the second to last one on this side. Go in. We're going to choose pipeline. We're going to connect it to that floor hole. We're going to bring this down. And if you scroll your mouse wheel, you should get it to kind of go where you want it right there. And that's exactly where I want that. We're going to go down here to this one on this side. We're going to do the same thing here. So I'll just have to move my mouse wheel until I get that where I want it. Perfect. And then we're going to connect these two together like so. Next, let's grab a pipeline junction right here. Let's rotate that upwards like that. And we're just going to eyeball this basically. We're just going to connect these together. So... 
That looks good to me. You can kind of line it up with the bolts in each one. That kind of helps to line things up. And then grab a pipeline and connect that to that. Copy that, come down here, same thing. So we will then put that kind of right about there's looking pretty good. And connect these two with a pipe. Next, I'm gonna need a floor pipe. So we're gonna grab that. I'm gonna put this one right in the middle of this one right here. So right underneath that, there we go. Grab a junction, put it right over top of that. Just like that should work. Uh, just kind of line those up. There we go. And connect those two together. There we go. All right, so now the oil is going to come up. It's going to go into this pipeline. It's going to go up to this machine, this machine, this machine, and this machine. So that should make sense at this point. Next, we're going to come down here to our oil extractor. We are then going to go ahead, grab a pipeline. We're going to connect to the oil extractor. We're just going to run this along this kind of walkway that we've made down through here as far as we can get it to go straight up the middle so um i'll go back in one until we're right on that junction right there and then we'll make another one again as far as we can go all the way down through here straight up the middle and how far can this go okay looks like we're gonna get to right there all right and then one more should do the job we're gonna come all the way down through here and I'm gonna connect it. Actually, let's bring it down from our floor hole right there. Let's bring this down. And again, I'm gonna rotate our mouse wheel until I get that where I want it, which is right there. All right, should be straight up right there. And then we can just connect those two pipes together. That shouldn't be a problem. Now we are going to want to do one more thing here, which is we are going to need to put a pipeline Let's see there, a pump into this. So when we did the original coal generators with the water, we didn't use a pump, we didn't need to because they were a certain level from each other and that's called a head lift. Now a head lift from a oil extractor is about 10 meters. So by adding a pump into this, a pump gives it about a 20 meter head lift and a maximum of 23 from my understanding. So if we put this right about here, right in front of our ladder right there. That should do it. Now you can rotate that too so that you know which way the pump is actually pumping. So it should be, let me actually go ahead and like grab this here and I'll show you. Let me re like remove this. We'll put it back so I can kind of show you. I forgot to do this. So see how you see it kind of going this way? Like that, you see that blue kind of going that way? If we rotate our mouse wheel, now you're gonna see that going up. That kind of gives you an idea how far that that can pump upwards. But again, right in front of that ladder right there should do it. Just make sure that you see the blue kind of going up that direction. So next we're going to think about the output of each of the refineries here. So we know we have rubber being made here and plastic being made on this side. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put a floor hole right here for a conveyor belt right on the edge of this square in front of each one of these right here. So there, come down to this one. Not this one though, we don't have to worry about that one right right this moment anyway. And come down to this one and put it in front of that one. All right, so we got four of those. And what we'll do is let me grab a conveyor lift, attach it to that. We're gonna hit R to make that an input and put that on front of each one of these like so. And then we're gonna run our conveyor belts into these. So just like that. There we go. So our rubber and our plastic will go down underneath this floor. Now we've got to deal with our pipes. So our pipes now are going to be, let me grab a floor hole here. And I wanna put that right about there. So again, it looks like it's gonna be right in the middle of each of these floors. All right, so I'm gonna place down my last floor hole right there. And then of course I'm going to connect that with pipes. So we'll go on that into that, and this one into this one, this one into this one, and this one into this one. All right, now back on the logistics floor again, we're going to grab another pipe here. We're gonna come down here to our last floor hole that we left open before. We're gonna go ahead and connect that to that. We're gonna bring it down and make kind of an L shape out of that 
and then we're going to bring another pipe up we're going to go as far as we need to to get it to right there so there's where our holes are right there so we're going to bring this over straight right down to the middle and right there we're going to bring it back to because in order to curve the pipes it's the same way as conveyor belts it's two spaces and then now that should come over this way directly underneath of the floor holes above so yeah that should be right right there we'll bring this over to the middle make sure that is straight let's see right there just double check everything make sure you do it before you place it otherwise you gotta delete it and redo it and then we'll come down here to the other side do the same exact thing right there bring that up and right there is our middle so right there and then back to and then that should connect straight to that now if we look it should be directly underneath all of these floor holes here so yeah that should work fine now we're going to do the exact same thing we did before on the other side we're going to go ahead and get the junction crosses we're going to put them right underneath of these we're going to turn it so that they're facing upwards line them up with the bolts right about there and just do this for all of these down through here placing the last one right there and then connect these up with pipes like so and there we have it. So now all of the heavy oil residue that are coming out of our plastic machines and stuff are now going to come down into this. And then it's going to go over to each side into the refineries above us to be produced into the petroleum coke. So again, we have our pipes coming up, bringing the crude oil into our refineries that make the plastic and the rubber and also with the byproduct of the heavy oil residue. The heavy oil residue is then pumped out over to this machine on the left and the machine on the right and that is going to be turned into the petroleum coke all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the petroleum coke that we're making from the heavy oil residue so this actually has the added benefit of not only being using up the byproduct to keep our machines running because if you don't do something with that byproduct it's just going to clog up and your machines are going to your refineries themselves are just going to stop working and they're just not going to be efficient so we have to make use of the byproduct and that's what the petroleum coke is for so the petroleum coke again is a good use for that as well as having the added benefit that you can burn it the same as coal it's not as efficient as coal but it will still burn as coal which means you can use it in a coal generator so what we're going to do is go into our power section in our build menu we're going to grab a coal generator now i'm standing right in the middle of our platform right here I'm gonna go right here in between these two. So we're gonna have this space over here where we've built our uh, our pipes and, and our conveyor lifts and stuff. We're gonna go right here between these two platforms, one away from the middle, one square, right there. And I'm gonna bring it towards me two steps. That's three, right there's where I want it. And I'm gonna put two more right next to this, one and two two right there come on get where i need you and then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side so i'm going to copy these over here on this side we're going to put it right there now i want this turned away from me uh you want the input being from the edge right there and we'll have it come up there let's see uh right there and then two steps towards me right there and right here next to that and another one right next to me here Make sure I did this right on this side. Yes. Okay. So these were already facing away. Now I prefer this design because I like having all the smokestacks on one side instead of in the middle. Uh, if you want, you could turn these around, but I think this is going to work best this way. So you've got all the smokestacks on that edge, all the smokestacks on that edge, and the smokestacks from our refineries down here all on one edge as well. So I think this works. I hope you guys agree. But again, feel free to spin this around if you want. Next, I'm going to come down here to the edge of one of, it doesn't matter which side, but down here to the edge of our generators down here. We're going to go into our architecture, and I'm going to grab a catwalk stairs. I'm going to put it right here, facing kind of away from us. Make sure that's right, right there in the middle of this platform. And then I'm going to take and change this over to a catwalk straight. And I'm just going to run a catwalk all the way down to pretty close to there but one back right there i'm going to change this to an angle 
and right there grab that run this over through here and let's see right there and then turn that into another oops uh let me grab that piece right there there we go catwalk corner right there and then i'm going to run this all the way up this way until we get back down here to this side and then back right about there and then we'll put another stairs right there on that side right there i built too many so i'll just delete that one there and that one there we go now we have some nice catwalk stairs that run along the edge of our generators right here and leaves this kind of space open right here uh, but what we're going to do with this space but here's what we're going to do with this space we are going to go ahead and grab uh, let's see organization and i'm going to get one of these industrial storages and i'm going to face it with the input right here on this side and i'm going to place one kind of right about let's see uh, i want to leave a little bit of space so i'm going to take it right here but i'm going to move it over one so not exactly in between these two, but pretty close to it. And uh, that looks about good right there. And I'm going to place another one over here doing the exact same thing. Uh, we're going to leave a gap right in between that. And that, as you can see, that is, uh, clears up that space in between here. And then this is where the rubber and the plastic are going to go into. We're going to, so we're going to run these down in and up into these two industrial storage devices. So let's go ahead and put a floor hole right there on that side and right here on this side. And we'll use conveyor lifts. Now I'm going to start from the top first. We're going to go down into these. And then we can turn this so that we have the conveyors on this side. This way you can kind of see the things coming up and going into it. Just make sure so you can see if anything stopped or not. And do the same thing over here. So we'll connect to the top first move down connect to that hole right there there we go by starting from here and then moving down into that it lets you control which way your conveyor belt's going to go if i'd done that from the bottom up i couldn't have said i wanted the conveyor belts to be on this side instead they would be on this side here and uh, you can still see it but i think this way works a little better all right so once again back here on our logistics floor we are going to come down here to the floor hole right here we're going to grab a conveyor lift. We're going to attach it to the floor hole, bring it down, facing that direction there. We're going to come over here, and I want to put a merger right here. So let's see, right there, that's a splitter, so we'll change that into a merger. And I want to get it right lined up with that conveyor lift that's coming down through there. And I want to have the output facing this way just like that i think probably work yeah right there and that should be able to let's see i should be able to bring this down and connect it just to that you should hear it click once it's connected like that all right and then we'll run a conveyor belt in from there into that merger all right and then we're going to run a conveyor lift that comes down from here and come down i could have it do it maybe like that actually uh yeah in fact i think that's actually going to work just fine so i should be able to make that turn yeah perfect so it's going to come out and go up into that so we have uh rubber or plastic i think i'm making plastic on this side so the plastic is going to come down it's going to go into this same from this machine that's also plastic it's going to merge in here and then all of that is going to go in here into those industrial storages up there now over here on this side, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We'll grab this, we're gonna bring it down to there, turn it that way. We're gonna bring that right there, turn that that way towards us. And then I wanna grab a merger, come down here, make sure that's turned the right way. Something about like that I think will work just fine. Um, as long as it's pretty close to that, it should work. You can have it here, you can have it there. It doesn't really make a huge difference. You just gotta have it in line with the output facing us right here. All right, and then I'll just grab that, connect that down into that. And then that conveyor belt is gonna run into there. Conveyor belt into there. There we go. All right, so again, on this side, I'm pretty sure is gonna be the rubber. So the rubber is gonna come down 
move into this merger right here. Also, this rubber is coming down into this merger, and it all goes out and into the industrial storage upstairs. All right, next up is going to be that petroleum coke. So we got to get the petroleum coke down out of these machines to the floor below us, and then it's going to come up into these right here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and place a let's see a floor hole i'm thinking uh let's see uh -huh. there we go put it same line as that mark it up with that yeah that looks good right there put a conveyor lift right here on the end of that make sure it's a input run that belt coming out of that into that there we go now this one we're not going to have any byproduct we don't have to worry about this pipe output right here we only have to worry about the petroleum coke coming out of here and we have to run it into these machines here now also these machines will be needing water too so we also have to be aware of that all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take a floor hole we're going to put it right in front of the input going into our coal generator and we're going to do that on each one of these down through here like so there we go then we'll take a conveyor lift and we'll pop that into that and it should connect right up with no problem um, there we go and into that all right so that's going to be the input for our petroleum coke but again we do have to deal with the water as well so let's go into our build menu we'll grab the pipeline floor hole i'm going to move this right out behind our conveyor lifts right here so that should be right about mm, yeah right there I think yes okay and I'll do this down here on this one as well so we're just gonna line these up down through here to make sure everything is where I need it to be there and here and then we'll go ahead and we'll put those pipes into that so there to that there to that and there to that all right and once again, we're going to come down to our logistics layer down here. We're then going to grab conveyor lifts here. We're going to put them on each of our co-generator intakes going there, here, and here. And then we're going to come down to this site down here. And I want to grab a merger. No, a splitter, actually. We want a splitter here. So that's going to be coming out of that right there. So we'll line that up to that hole. And that should work just fine right there. We're going to grab a conveyor lift. We're going to connect it down and into that. And then all we have to do at this point is grab a splitter and connect it to the lines down through here going this way. So that should be right there. And we'll bring it up to here and down to here and make sure all of those are lined up just right. There we go. Then we'll connect up our conveyor belts like so. Uh, well, there we go. And, and there to there. There into that. And into that. And this one should already be connected. So we'll just connect that into that. Now, that's going to bring our petroleum coke down into this splitter, which is then going to send it up to these and be split among all three of our co generators on this side. And we're going to go over to the other side. We're going to do the exact same thing down here. We're going to grab conveyor lifts. We're going to bring them down like so, like that, and like that. And this side, we don't actually have to turn this way. This side, we can actually just bring this right down like that. Uh, in fact, we might even be able to get it like that. Uh, in fact, that's going to work. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's grab a splitter. Uh, let's see, just uh, like that. There we go. And we should be able to just turn these just like this, I believe. Yeah, actually, that will work just fine. So then we'll take these. We'll put them down through here like that. And like that. Now, these we will have to connect up using conveyors because, um, or the, yeah, conveyor belts. Because we didn't actually bring that down first. If we had put these in first and then connected those into it, then it would have a connection. But it doesn't, so we'll have to do it this way. So we'll just connect these up here and like that and then one last conveyor lift down and that should do the trick all right so that's going to connect all of our belts up for our petroleum coke next we have to connect up water but we need to have a way to get the water up here first which is going to mean we're going to need water extractors 
All right, so now I'm back down here on our lower level where our oil is coming in right next to the water down here. And I've looked at a few different ways of actually doing our water extractors for this uh, makeshift oil rig that we're kind of building. And the only way I can kind of figure out how to do it is to put them maybe on this side, like the outside sides. I tried putting them on the inside, but they're just a little too tall for what we have here in the middle and it just isn't going to work. So instead, we're going to put them over here. So here's how we're going to do this. First, we are going to go in and we're going to grab a pipeline support. We're going to take it down here and we're not going to put it right on that line. We're going to bring it back one, like right about there. We'll do the job. All right. And then we're going to come down here to this end. And what I want to do is go one over so right here on this second square the second foundation we're going to go to the edge right here we're going to put one of these in here we're going to come to the middle of this and then we're going to go to this way and then change that turn it so it's coming this way now all we have to do now is go in grab our pipeline connect this to this connect this to that there we go so that's going to be our pipe that's going to be running going to come down here we're going to come kind of jump on top of our pipe right here so we can kind of line things up a little bit we're going to go into our build menu we're going to go to production water extractor we're going to turn that facing us and we're just going to kind of line this up at the best we can we don't want to put it like right neck up to it but kind of line it up a little bit with a little bit of space and that should probably work right there fantastic we're going to grab a water extractor and we want to hit R to make this, I believe auto 2D should work. Let's see here. Yeah, 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 right there. All right, so that's going to run our pipe from our water extractor into the pipeline and the water will go over here. Now we have to get it up there. So what we're going to do is, I don't think I can do this from down here, but I'm going to try. Let me see. Uh, logistics and I want a... Yeah, pipeline floor yeah i didn't think it well it no nah, it's not gonna let me so we're gonna have to go up top again not a problem all right once we're back up on our logistics floor what we want to do is copy a floor hole here we want to put that lined up right with those right there we know that the line is going to come up in the middle of this square like right here on this line so what we want to do is just kind of line this up now i think right there it's going to be our perfect line we don't want to go too far over because we want to line it up with those down through there too now while we're here instead of jumping back down and fixing the bottom layer first we'll just go ahead and run our pipes up through here so i'm going to run this here we're going to change this to horizontal to vertical there we go and we're just going to run this pipe all the way down through here as far as we can i may just do it maybe eh, we'll, we'll just go as far as we can i gotta turn that and get that lined up perfectly right there's good and then just extend that out just a little bit more because we have one more hole that has to go in there so we'll do it to there that will work and then if we need any future expansion we can just run it off of this pipe right here next thing is going to be what we've already been doing many times before we're going to grab the pipe junction cross we're going to turn it up so it's facing upwards and we're going to place it lined up with those bolts one there one right here get that just right there we go and come down here to this next one and line that up right there too all right copy that pipe and then just connect these up and that should be all you have to do up here come back down here to this bottom floor copy the pipeline connect it to the top floor run it down uh horizontal to vertical and boom now only one more thing to do we are going to need a pump right here so make sure it is facing the right direction again you can see it if you watch you can see the blue line kind of come out of it and or some people say green I don't know it's green it's blue it's one or the other I don't know this looks like a baby blue to me so not sure what it looks like on your screen but yeah so we want to put this kind of close to that junction right there just kind of line that up that'll do right there so that pump is going to send that water from this water extractor right here up to the co-generators up on top now once you get all of this side done we just have to do it all once again on the other side over there so we're going to place a water extractor over there we're going to run the pipes up we're going to run everything connected to our co-generators over there as well so just follow the same directions but in reverse and you'll be able to do it 
All right, so now we have all the code generators and refineries on the top layer. We have all of our lines and pipes ran on our logistics layer. We have pumps and water extractors, and we have the oil extractor all ready to go. So the next part is going to be powering all of this. So I'm gonna go back up to the top layer again. And for my power, what I'm gonna to try to do here is I'm gonna make a bit of a frame system. So we're gonna start by standing here on top of our code generator so we can work. We're gonna go into our build menu and I'm gonna go into architecture and right here under painted beam is what I'm gonna do. Now I wanna do something a little bit different on how we're gonna run our power. So we're gonna make this a little cleaner for the most part. So I'm gonna start right here on that edge, right there where those two meet. Maybe bring it out just a little bit right there. And I'm gonna bring this up to about 12 meters right there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So what I wanna do is basically get right there where it's kind of coming across through, you know, basically right behind these right here. Uh, and then we're gonna go over here to the other side, right over here. And I want to make sure I'm right there where that edge is, which is going to be this one right here. Line that up with that. Yes, right there. Same thing, about 12 meters up. And then I'm going to come down here to the other side, right next to this one. And again, we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to bring it right down here to the edge. Bring that up to about 12 meters. Right there. And then I'm going to kind of get right on the edge of that, right there. And I'm just gonna run these across, right there to that one. And then come over here to the other side and I wanna do the same one down here. Make sure that's right where I want it. 12 meters up, right there. And then run a line that goes from there over to here. Yep, that works for me. Now let's go back up here to the top of these uh this catwalk up here so i'm going to jump from here to there now what i want to do here is i want to run from here and i'm just going to run this straight all the way across down through here like this um i can come down to a certain point as far as it'd go basically which is about 40 meters come over here to the other side do the exact same thing down here so we'll go about 40 meters across right there then I'm going to go from the edge of these, I'm going to go down, and we'll bring that across over here to this one, and we'll come down here as well, all the way down to the floor, there we go, and basically what we did was just kind of built a grid right here, and this is going to be like a power grid sort of thing. All right, so now that we have our beams in place, the next thing is going to be actually placing lines going from our code generators up to these beams. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna connect the first one here and I'm gonna do it to the bottom right there. And then we're gonna connect this one. We're gonna jump over here to this one. Same thing, just kind of line these up best you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll get our last one down here, right to the bottom there, that'll work. And then we can just kind of connect these. Uh, we can go to the back if we want, like that. And then once I do those, I'll connect that. And then again, we'll go down there to this. That looks right there and connect that to that. And yeah, so that's the first side. We'll do the same thing to the other side here. And there we go. And then we'll connect all these together like that. There we go. Now with each of our co-generators now hooked up to the power going around on these beams here, we are going to then turn our attention to our refineries. So I'm gonna go down here to the very first one on the edge. It's gonna be easier to work with, especially if you can uh, just get on top of these beams here to walk around. So we'll go ahead and take that and we'll bring that down, kind of get it lined up perfect right there. Same thing here, you wanna move over to the next one and just kind of line that up. I'm I'm gonna say that's probably right right there. It's hard to guess and it's hard to see from where we're standing But if I move out here, I should be able to get this next one pretty easily. All right So we'll move down to that one There we go And then I got to get over to the other side and do all those so essentially we're just gonna connect each of these up to the top of these beams as perfectly aligned as we can Once you have all six of these connected we'll run a cable that goes all the way across like so and I'm gonna put another one kind of right here on that beam where these two beams meet. Run to that, run to that. 
And then I'll do the same thing over there. But I'm going to go ahead and run this down this way until we get to our first one right here. There we go. And then I'll run that down to that. That should run all of our systems down that way now. And we'll do the same thing here. So we'll put one in the middle right there where the two beams connect and connect each of these up like so. And then we'll run this down into our first connection, which is right here. There we go. And then connect those two together. All right, so now all of our co-generators and our refineries are all connected up to the same network of power lines running along all of these beams right here. So next, what I'm going to do is connect a power line from right there on that corner to right here on this corner. And then we're going to run that all the way down to this side down here. We'll put it right there on the corner using a power line pole. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So let's head over here and we'll connect from there and run it to the edge of this beam right here and then run that all the way down to this corner here all right now next we're going to come down here to our bottom floor down here we're going to take a power line we're going to run it from that power line pole right there to the bottom of that connect it right on the edge of our platform right there then we're going to take that and we're going to run that to right about there now we should be able to connect that straight to our water extractor, I believe. Yeah. All right. And then we'll run that to the middle right here. And then we'll run another one that goes all the way over here to this side. So that looks like that's going to be right about there. Connect that to that water extractor and then over to the bottom of this power pole here. And then connect that to the power pole right there. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to take another line. We're going to run it from that corner right there to the very middle of that right there. And then we're going to run that over here to right above this. So that should be right there. And then we'll run that to our pump here on this side. And then we're going to do the same thing over on this side. So we're going to connect from there down to the middle right there. And then we can come over here and connect that to right there and then down to that pump right there. All right, so that's going to give power to that pump and we have power from everything else. Now we just have to connect everything up to a main line. So what I'm going to do for this is we are going to take and run a cable from here. And I'm going to run it like straight down to, uh, we'll, we'll do it to right, right there. Now I'm going to run a wire that goes from this power pole and we're going to put another power pole right here on the inside and then run that to this pump right here. Okay, so now all the pumps are connected. Now all we have to do is just run down here to the other side. So I'll grab a cable, we'll run it down through here, see how far we can get down through here. Can I get almost to the edge? Almost. I can get right here. And that to do that. All right. So then I will just connect this up to our oil extractor right there. And there we go. Now, before I connect the power from this line up to this line, which runs off of our main factory power, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a foundation and I'm going to put five of these down in a line right here. So one, two, three, four and five there we go all right then i'm going to go into our building menu into power i'm going to grab biomass burners and i'm going to connect these i'm going to put these in a line all the way down through here so one two three and four next i'm going to connect these up to power lines like this so we'll put one there and i'll put one here connect that to that i'll connect that to that power line and connect this to this power line right there so all four of these biomass burners are now connected and then what i want to do is i want to come down here to the middle and i want to grab a power switch and i'm going to place that power switch like right here on this platform like right there we're going to run a wire that goes from this power line to a and then from b to that one 
And what that is, that's a coupler. So it basically disconnects the main power of our factory away from our oil, everything down in here from this power and everything. So I think that's going to be the best way to do that. That way, if this starts to use too much power, we can turn the circuit breaker off here and still have power in our main factory. I think that's the best way to do that. All right, so next we just have to fill up our biomass burners. Now I just happen to have about 200 or close to 200 biofuel with me. So I'm going to take about 50 close to it, put it in each one of our biomass generators here. And then our last one down here. All right, and then if I click the power, is it going to start running? It is. Okay. And that's actually starting to run our oil extractor and some of our pumps and other things. So everything's starting to run. And now I'm going to come down here to our circuit breaker. And I'm going to turn the power off here or turn it on. All right. So now that should give us enough power to run everything. If not, we can still turn the power off here, disconnecting all of this and still have everything in our main factory still running. Now it does take a little bit for the oil or any fluid really to kind of fill the pipes up and get everything running. If I look at this right now, we're running about, looks like 35 or so in this pump. I'm running about 120. So yeah, it's just taking a little bit to kind of get this all running, but it should fill up the pipes. Same thing with our water in those pipes, but eventually everything is gonna start getting up there and running correctly. If we come down here, we can see our pumps are running. Yep, all three of the pumps. All right, let's come up here to the top floor. Let's see how we're doing. All right, so we don't have any oil flowing through here yet into our refineries, but it is coming. If I check down here, yep, I do see it. All right, so it is starting to fill these up. You can see it kind of filling the pipe up there. So it's just gonna take a little bit, but eventually it should start to fill all of these up and then our refineries will start running. All right, I'm seeing smoke in our smokestacks. That's a good sign right there. All right, yep, looks like we are now, we're making rubber, which is uh, the byproduct. We have the heavy oil residue as well. So we should eventually start filling up these pipes down here of the heavy oil residue. And then once those fill up, we should start making petroleum coke as well. Now, after everything is actually hooked up and it's been running for a little bit, one thing I've noticed is that our refineries that are making the plastic and the rubber aren't really running at maximum efficiency. They're not at 100%. For some odd reason, it doesn't seem to be getting enough oil up there, even though each of these needs 30. So that's 30, 60, 90, 120. This thing is pumping 120. For some reason, it doesn't seem to be getting enough up there to run everything. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here. I've already kind of put a power shard in this to overclock it to 150, but I think I'm gonna go, let's do 160. So go ahead, feel free to throw a power shard in there up it to about 160 and then everything should start running a little more efficiently up on top. I think maybe we've just raised them a little too much past the head lift. The pump says 20 meters. I read online it can go a maximum of 23. So maybe it's just where we're above that 20. I think that could be the issue. Not 100% sure, but that could be what it is. And then, you know, but yeah, in the meantime, just go ahead and feel free to do that. Now your refineries on each end down here that are making the petroleum coke probably aren't running to their maximum efficiency yet either. Uh, that's just due to it's probably not getting enough um, of the petroleum coke. It's getting some, and it's definitely running the co-generators, but it could be a little better. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that should work out fine. We'll probably have enough power and everything that we don't even need these things right now. So once these kick off because they run out of fuel, everything should be fine and, and running efficiently. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode of How to Satisfactory. We've finished our makeshift oil rig over here. Um, everything is running to the best of its ability so far. Um, it will eventually shut down. Our storage is going to get full and then we're not going to have anything to put anything. So, you know, it's just going to shut down. But what we're going to do is in the next episode, we're going to take the plastic and the rubber. We're going to send it over there to the shoreline. We're going to make a truck station and we're going to send that truck back to our factory with loads of rubber and plastic. Might even do one or two, but that's going to be the next episode. In the meantime, wherever you guys are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. I'll see you next time.